everybody. Welcome to the Hidden Gems Podcast. This is the show where every week we try to dig into a streaming service and get you to go beyond the big name uh, properties that they have and look at some of the hidden gems that are on that streaming service. And it's a lot of fun. And I'm from Rachel Wagner and Ryan is here. Hey, Rachel. So great to be back with you once again. Uh, we are only a couple weeks away from the end of 2020, so I think we're going to have to like stake this year through the heart, like Peter Cushing <laughs> on Christopher Lee style, but it's going to be a new year soon. I'm looking forward to it, all the possibilities, both good, bad, and in between, but, uh, but as, far as, as far as the rest of this year goes, I'm going to, I'm going to relish it. I'm going to, yeah. uh, I'm going to look back on things I've done wrong, things I've done right, and, uh, and hopefully have the wisdom to know the difference for 2021. I think that's a good goal. And I'm all, I've almost made it through the Christmas viewing season uh, over at Hallmarkies podcast. I, <laughs> I, uh, I think I'm at something like 70 Christmas movies, having watched uh, new Christmas movies. So uh, it's pretty, pretty crazy, but it's been a great ride and we've had a great season. And uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's a privilege to be busy during this time, I think, uh, that uh, I, I'm lucky to be able to, to be working so much and to be watching so many Christmas movies. I mean, what a great gig that is. So it's been, I, a, it's been a lot of fun. I have a feeling by the end of the run, you're going to be like Andy Dufresne at the end of Shawshank. Just be like, <laughs> I made it. Yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 74. I sold myself, sold myself short. I watched 74 Christmas movies. Uh, so, yeah, I think that might be accurate. <laughs> so, yeah, so today we are talking about the Peacock Network. It's been a few months since we talked about Peacock. And uh, they are the NBC uh, streaming service. And I think they're probably best known for their television offerings. Uh, and we sometimes do talk a little bit about television, but for the most part, we're talking about movies, but they actually do have a pretty good slate of movies that you can watch as well. And so uh, we're going to have a lot of fun talking about those. And now they have Harry Potter, they have the Nolan Dark Knight, they have a bunch of uh, franchi franchises. They did have Jurassic Park, now they don't have it. Uh, but uh, but yeah, what do you think about Peacock? Uh, I'm, I actually found a lot of movies that I hadn't seen for a long time, but it was like a, oh, I completely forgot about that one. And just a flood of positive memories just wafted, mm -hmm. over, wafted over me. Yeah. Uh, my five, if I had a theme to tie my five all together were, uh, my theme would be five movies that I hadn't seen in a very long time, but I have nothing but positive memories of. Yeah. Well, I went all holiday themed this week for all of my picks. Allow me to take a minute to absorb the shock of this. <laughs> That's right. And uh, they don't have like the best holiday selection. I have to say they could do better about that. Uh, but still, nevertheless, it's uh, there's there's definitely five. So uh, it's going to be fun to talk about them. Yeah, I do joke about, I do joke, of course, <laughs> but it's like whenever, whenever you text me your list and you're like, oh, there's a Christmas movie in there. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started. I will give my first one. And this uh, is actually my blind spot pick for the month of December. I've been doing blind spot on my blog since 2016. So it's been going every month. I do, I review a film that's critically lauded or is a fan favorite that I haven't seen. And, uh, and I post my review of that film and I try to make it a variety of, uh, so they're not all sort of, I don't know, the sort of revered classics. I try to, you know, have some more cult classics and different things over there. And I really enjoy doing it. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, so this month I am reviewing the film Remember the Night. This is from 1940 and it stars Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray. 
And I have to say, Fred McMurray is much nicer in this movie than he is in his other Christmas movie, The Apartment. <laughs> which That's that Billy seen... Wilder movie, right? Where Jack won yes. the Oscar? Yes, which I love. I absolutely love The Apartment. I think it's brilliant. Uh, and it's better than this movie, to be frank. But he's a villain in that movie. <laughs> He's not a nice person uh, in the apartment. Spoiler alert. <laughs> he is not nice. Uh, He's an absent minded professor. How could you hate Fred I and Curry? I know. That's why it's so shocking. Uh, but uh, but uh, the Remember the Night, it's about this man who is a district attorney who is about to prosecute this woman who stole a very expensive bracelet from a jewelry store and uh, he finds out that she, she he, well that the the plot oh, sorry the um the trial is getting delayed until after christmas and because of some technicalities and things going on and so he feels bad that she's going to be in prison for christmas and uh because he's a super nice guy and so he gets her bail paid and uh, he isn't planning on spending any more time with her after that. But then he finds out that she is from Indiana and then he is from Indiana. And so he's like, well, I'll take you to your, your, your folks home and, you know, while I'm on my way. And so then they kind of have this road trip and all kinds of shenanigans happen and, love ends up happening and of course and you know this is Bar Barbara Stanwyck she is in two classic holiday films because she's also in Christmas in Connecticut and I do like Christmas in Connecticut also better than this but this is written by Preston Sturgis who is a really famous writer for romantic comedies particularly and and this it kind of it goes to some darker places it's a little more cynical than like your typical romantic comedy, I think. And so it was pretty interesting to watch. And, but I think that they have really, a really nice chemistry and it's not very tidy, like a typical romantic comedy. Um, it's not as predictable as a, as a typical romantic comedy. So I think if people hate romantic comedies or holiday films, you might actually still like this film. Um, and so I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good film and uh, very well shot and very well very well acted so uh yeah remember the night yeah that's uh barbara stanwick and uh fred mcmurray were the same duo as in double indemnity oh yeah yeah and so right. they're it's judging from the uh judging from the plot of remember the night they're on much better terms than they were in double indemnity <laughs> that's right i forgot about that yeah yeah so uh, that is my first pick. What about you? What's your first pick? So my first pick is a movie from 2011 and it is called Bernie. Uh, this was directed by Richard Linklater. We all know who he is. He directed uh, Fast Times at Richmond High, uh, directed Boyhood, directed Scanner Darkly. He's, he's done a lot. And this is, this is one of his more underrated movies. Nobody talks about this. And I think, I think that a lot of people should. It, it tells a true story of a man named Bernie Teed, played by Jack Black. He's like a model citizen. He works for a church. He's a music director at a church. You know, everybody knows who he is. He has an absolutely sterling reputation. Knows everybody, loves everybody, has a heart as big as all outdoors, as they used to say. Well, he gets along with almost everybody, except for an elderly widow named Marjorie Nugent, played by Shirley MacLaine. She has millions of dollars, but is kind of like a female Ebenezer Scrooge, like like a female Scrooge. I can't, like an Emily Scrooge, for lack of a better term. Uh -huh. but, but Bernie, because he is the person that he is, tries to befriend her, and he eventually does, and the two form a relationship. However, her evilness eventually wears Bernie down to the point where on a fateful day in 1996, he kills her. And, and it, this is all based on a true story and essentially Bernie ended up getting charged for the murder despite the fact that the entire town's like, 
look who he killed. Like, she's a complete and total B dot, 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 dot. But still, he ends up going to jail. This, this, is, de- I, this is definitely, I definitely watched, didn't seek this movie out. I was walking through the library one day, and I found this DVD, and I'm like, Bernie, what is this? And when I watched it, I was like, this was far better than I was expecting. Uh, Jack Black is the main star, like I said. He's really good. I think Jack Black is a very underrated actor, especially movies like School of Rock and Cable Guy and a bunch of others. Uh, Shirley MacLaine is in here. We all know who she is, and she's great as well. Uh, Matthew McConaughey plays a sheriff, and I think it's an unwritten law somewhere that Matthew McConaughey shows up in every Richard Linklater movie, no matter how big or small the part. And on, on the whole, this movie is just... It's fascinating because I love movies based on true stories, no matter how hair-brained or high off the wall that they seem. It, it's one of those. It's one of those movies that's like, this couldn't have possibly happened, and then you do the research and you find out that it absolutely did. So if you've never seen this movie, I do recommend giving it a chance. Yeah, you know, this has been on my list of me to watch for a long time I actually haven't seen it because I'm a huge Richard Linklater fan and I didn't realize that it was even done by him directed by him until fairly recently and so I I definitely when we do a follow-up I'm gonna this will be one for sure that I will watch because I love I love the whole cast I love Richard Linklater Uh, it sounds bizarre crazy (laughs) So I think that sounds like a perfect choice for a hidden gem. Yeah, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be super interested in what you have to say about it. Yeah, that'll be fun for sure. Uh, and speaking of Richard Linklater, over at the Criterion Project, my friend Conrado, we did our episode this week is on was on Boyhood. So if you're interested to know more of my thoughts and how that held up on the rewatch, uh, then check that out because we had a really good discussion and we had uh conrado's friend trevor on with us and the three of us had a really good discussion about boyhood so check that out i'll put a link in that in the description uh so all right well my next pick is back to christmas and it is mr magoo's christmas carol and i am not familiar hardly at all with mr magoo i know that uh that uh he was a you know popular character in uh in television and and uh that they had a terrible uh they had a terrible leslie nielsen feature film uh, about him but my main knowledge of mr magoo is from this movie mr magoo's christmas carol and this was one of the very first animated christmas specials to ever air and uh, it's really charming it has wonderful songs uh it's by the same people who did the bells are ringing and uh and on broadway and uh, i forget their names let me get it and the the music is by uh doesn't list it on the wikipedia sorry um no the music is by julie stein uh, with lyrics by Bob Merrill. So Julie Stein was a big Broadway uh, veteran. So, uh, and it tells your classic Christmas Carol story. But one of the, one of the unique parts about it is they do present first instead of past first, which is kind of weird. I don't know why they did that. But, um, but the animation is beautiful. It has a really cool kind of uh, sort of abstract, sketchy kind of look to it but I love it. I love all the backgrounds. And uh, we've actually covered this on Obscure Animation, me and Stanford. So we talked about uh, the the UPA uh, just recently in July. So if you want to hear more about my opinions on Mr. McGoose Christmas Girl, you should check that out. I can put a link in in there, but it's really good. It has really good songs. Uh, It's especially uh, the... uh, uh, the winter was warm. I think it's a really beautiful song. Uh, it has uh, fun songs like the Razzleberry dressing song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Razzleberry dressing. They're very excited about their dressing. And 
Uh, and I, you know, I love the story of Christmas Carol. So I, in almost any version, it's hard to kind of do wrong for me, the redemption of Scrooge. And uh, in this one, they set it up as a play uh, that, but it's just sort of a framework for, uh, for the, the, the story. Uh, and uh, it's uh, the, the um, Flintstones Christmas Carol. That's also set up like a play. Uh, but it's actually worked more into the plot, the play, anyway. Uh, but this one is really good, and it's underrated, and people should check it out. Yeah, unfortunately, my only knowledge of Mr. Magoo is that terrible Leslie Nielsen movie. It is a, I think an award should be given for somebody, somebody made Leslie Nielsen unfunny. Somebody should have gotten an award for that, or like a, like an un-award, but they, <laughs> they somehow managed to find a way. So, I, uh, so I'll so i definitely have to check this out just to like cleanse my Mr. Magoo palette. If that Wouldn't that be sense. great if, if like the Oscars worked that, okay, you got so many points, right? So you got 20 points for winning an Oscar. And then every time you did a terrible movie, you lost a point. And then... <laughs> If, and if you get down to a certain point, oh, you have to give it back. <laughs> and then uh, if that were the case, then Eddie Redmayne, who won it for Theory of Everything, would be in the negatives after yes. the Jupiter Ascending. Yes, and Crimes of Grindelwald, which oh, made true. me want to die. <laughs> but that, that really wasn't his fault. <laughs> yes, that's true. But it would just make you pick your projects a little more careful, don't you think? Right. You know, ooh, I'm getting close to that <laughs> that payback time uh anyway but yeah it's it's like i said i don't know mr magoo hardly at all this is just him like there's really very little of the whole uh nearsighted schick in this movie uh it's just him getting to the theater he crashes a car but other than that once he gets in the theater it's pretty much just your standard christmas carol except the for the fact that they do present first so uh, what about you? What's your second choice? So my second choice is from 1987, and it is the movie adaptation of the TV show Dragnet. Uh, this is this is based on the cop TV show of the 1960s, uh, and this time around it stars Dan Aykroyd, Tom Hanks, Christopher Plummer, and Harry Morgan, who plays the exact same character as he did in the Dragnet TV show. So there's a nice little bit of... Uh, little bit of carryover from that. But the movie tells the story of a cop named Joe Friday, who is very by the book. He's very straight laced. Like if it says so in the book, that is the law to him. And he and his partner is named uh, is named Strebeck, played by Tom Hanks. And he is the complete opposite of Friday in every way. It's like the odd couple if they were cops. And in this movie, they're they're going after this I want to say cult called Pagan, which is short for People Against Goodness and Normalcy. No, I did not make that up. That is their actual name. And, That's and, and it's run by Christopher Plummer. The movie is, is really funny because, you know, Friday is like, he's almost robotic in his delivery, and that speaks to Dan Aykroyd's talent, which I'll get to in a second. And Strebeck is very much of the late 80s. You know, he's like a hang loose, you know, and that type of guy. So in any other movie, this wouldn't have worked. But it's, it's Dan Aykroyd and it's Tom Hanks bouncing off of each other. And that's like, that's like a dry-aged ribeye right there. The, you're, there's no going wrong with it. Uh, there's, there's, a lot, there's, a lot of great, there's a lot of great character actors in here as well. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's kind of like... It's kind of like one of those comedies of the late 1980s that represents like Dan Aykroyd at the peak of like his comedic powers. Like he had done Ghostbusters a few years earlier, Blues Brothers, like like the 80s were like Dan Aykroyd's like like his peak. And Tom Hanks was just about to blast off into the stratosphere and moves like Forrest Gump and just like take over the 90s. So in a weird roundabout way, Dragnet was kind of a microcosm of what was in now, and what was going to be in, in the future. Yeah, I actually have never seen this. I've certainly heard of it and I've heard of the show. 
And I think a lot of times we forget how funny Tom Hanks can be. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, you know, he's hosted Siren Live so many times. He definitely could have been a member of Siren Live if he wanted to. Uh, he, he got started in he got his start in comedy, and uh, and so it's movies like this that kind of remind you, oh yeah, he can be really funny in broad comedy. Yeah, and what I love about this movie as well is that some that in some cases the roles reverse. Sometimes Strebeck becomes the very much by the book guy, and Friday becomes the you know the laid back emotional one. I won't spoil it, but there are definitely parts where it's like where it's like, oh, wow, they traded places, and that was nice. And the movie actually has a bit of a juicy budget, so you get some sequences that in any other comedy just would not work, but they somehow managed to do it. And in a bit of a weird twist of fate, I had no plans on this whatsoever. The director of this movie, Tom Mankiewicz, wrote the screenplay for the next movie I'm going to talk about, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So... Yeah. So my next choice is something really special. This is a new film. It's it's a TV special is what you'd call it. It's the Christmas Spectacular starring the Radio City Rockettes. And this is meaningful to me on a lot of levels. I'm a huge Broadway person. I love uh, love uh, musicals. And I it's been really sad for me to see uh, everything gets shut down over in Broadway in 2020, and uh, the uh, the Christmas Spectacular was one thing that was shut down. And so, to be able to get this new special uh, about with the the Spectacular featuring the Rockettes was really wonderful uh, here on P- on Peacock. And uh, it also has a lot of personal significance for me because. Uh, my grandmother loved the Rockettes so much. And one year, uh, my I had a cousin who had uh, consistent health problems uh, for, for many, many years. And uh, but she'd been doing pretty well uh, for about three or four years uh, going to college. This was back in like 2001, 2002. Anyway, and uh, we, me and my cousin, Lisa, uh, you know, it was 2000, it was 2000. And my cousin Lisa and I, we created the scheme that we were going to get our grandma to take us to, to New York city. And it, what we would do is we tell her, Oh, we'll go to the Rockettes. We can go see the Rockettes. And we told her that. And she was like, Oh, I want to go. I want to go. And so we all, we had this incredible trip to New York city and we went and saw as part of our trip, we went and saw the Rockettes Christmas Spectacular. And uh, they have a full live nativity as part of it. They've got all the Rockettes. They've got Santa. They've got everything, everything Christmas that you could imagine. And, uh, and my grandma loved it. We loved it. And it's a really special memory uh, for me because, uh, you know, my grandma's gone now, but my cousin passed away actually six months after the trip. And, uh, and that was really hard. Uh, and, uh, even though she'd had poor health for a long time, she'd been so good for a couple of years that it was a big shock. And I've always just treasured that memory of going to see the Rock Cats with my cousin and my grandma. And uh, so I really loved seeing this in 2020. And uh, this was just really special. It's only 45 minutes. And so if you're missing performances, if you're missing you know, something really Christmassy, uh, then this, I, 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 I can't not recommend more highly, the singing, the dancing, all of that is just really great. And uh, so I highly recommend it. Well, I have no idea how I'm going to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know, with this incredibly touching story about going to see the Rockettes with your, your grandmother <laughs> and your cousin. It's like, all I can add is, uh, I, I like the Rockettes too. I, I think they're great. Yeah. So, and and I, I guess really my only real memory is that my dad's a big Knicks fan. And so around Christmas time, you know, the Knicks are in full swing by this point. Uh, well, obviously not this season, but I'm sure you all know what I mean. But he always watches the games on the MSG network. And literally like the 
second to last, if not the last commercial before it's brought back to the game, is the uh, is the announcement that hey, the Rockets are back in town, and you know they're doing their routine, you know where they're kicking and they're stepping and all that. That that commercial played like every year for as long as I can remember. So I've never seen them personally, but I I'll always remember that commercial. And again, it's it's not the same thing as your story, but you know. <laughs> well, now is your chance to see them. You can watch this special and enjoy it. It's really cool that they did this. I feel like, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's that's they will always be very special to me. The Rock Cats. <laughs> um, what uh, what about you? What do you have next? So my next pick is. Uh, is another James Bond movie. We I talked about uh, I talked about uh, I talked about on Her Majesty's Secret Service in the last episode, and I didn't plan on this, but they now have a lot of Bond movies on Peacock, and I was looking through it, and one of my and my favorite Roger Moore Bond movie was on there. It was and it and I want to talk about it. It's the Man with the Golden Gun. When it comes to Roger Moore Bond movies, really the ones that people like to talk about for good, for good and for bad reasons are movies like Live and Let Die and Moonraker. But I think people skip over The Man with the Golden Gun, and I think that's, I think that's a bit of a mistake because I think subtly it's a very underrated Bond movie. The basic premise is that Bond is being hunted by the world's most expensive assassin. He's simply known as Scaramanga, and he's played by the legendary Christopher Lee. Uh, most of our younger fans might know him as Saruman from The Lord of the Rings and as Count Dooku in the prequels, but this man literally had over 200 credits to his, to his name. He was in so many movies to list them all. We would literally be here all week. Like, it, it's just too many to mention. But around this time, he was just coming off of a very successful stint as Dracula in the Hammer Dracula series. And here, he's definitely not a vampire, but he plays the world's most expensive assassin, Scaramanga, and he's the best part of the movie. He brings such a cerebral quality to, to the assassin part, and he's not just a, eh, <laughs> I'm gonna get you, Mr. Bond, like, no. He actually like lures Bond into his series of traps and it's all well thought out and played out and it's all very smart. And in, in, in a usual sense where Bond is like, has a bit of a mental edge, that edge is gone. And so he has to play Scaramanga on his level. I will be the first to admit that in this movie, there's some silly stuff. Like there's a stunt in which Bond flips a car across a river and lands it perfectly. Again, that's a bit silly. And there is a sheriff character named J.W. Pepper. And his role is basically a, a very rowdy American in an Asian country being like, oh baby, look at this. What is this over here? That's very cringy. Oh. But outside of that, I think this is a very entertaining movie and it definitely Definitely very underrated, especially in terms of Bond villain, because when you talk about top Bond villains, Scaramanga is almost never mentioned, and I think that he should be more often. Yeah, so James Bond movies are actually a pretty big blind spot for me. I have seen the Brosnan and the Craig Bonds. I have not seen hardly any of the other ones, and so, uh, yeah, this sounds it sounds fun. It sounds interesting. Yeah, I I don't think I've seen a single Roger Moore James Bond, not one. I don't think it's it's seen. it's best to um it's best to start with his first one, Live and Let Die, because it's like Live and Let Die is like top quality, and then the quality starts to go mm. down, like yeah. to to the point where it's like the final one, uh, where it's uh where it's Christopher Walken throwing dudes off of the blimp that he owns, and following that up with. Does anybody else want to drop out? Like that's the kind of stuff we're dealing with by the end. I haven't seen hardly any of the I haven't uh, of the Sean Connery ones either. I I started to watch one, The Diamonds Are Forever, and I didn't like it at all. Yeah. And so I heard that's a bad one though. It's not great. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Care I, for I think. It. Sean Connery's best bonds are like his early bonds, like Dr. No from Russia with Love, Goldfinger. Yeah. Those are his three best. 
Well, so my next pick is a animated, another animated special. This is 45 minutes. So it's, I'm giving you, giving you some short watches today (laughs) from Peacock. Uh, It's called The Happy Elf. And this is a cute little animated special about an elf that's really happy and he's driving everybody crazy because he's so happy all the time and he goes to bluesville where everybody is really grumpy (laughs) and so it becomes his task to make everybody happy because they're all so grumpy and uh, so it's just fun i mean it's really cute and you have Harry Connor Jr. is a is just one of the voices. Carol Kane, Mickey Rooney, Mae Whitman is in here. Uh, you have the, all the music by Harry Connick Jr. Uh, I believe and sung. He does the 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 title song, "The Happy Elf," and uh, it actually has twenty five. Uh, some of them are really short uh, numbers listed on the soundtrack, which is pretty crazy, um, but. Uh, it's just a sweet little cheerful Christmas movie about the happy elf. <laughs> yeah, uh, the uh, the happy elf should try it try it out here in 2020. It makes Bluesville <laughs> look like look like a Norman Rockwell painting. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we need happy elf 2020. Uh, no, in all seriousness, though, uh, I've actually never heard of this, and I. And it, that's strange because I'm actually a big Harry Connick Jr. fan. I've listened to most of his Christmas songs. I think he's incredibly talented. He was Dean in The Iron Giant, which he's he's so cool in that movie. In a movie chock full of quality, he's one of my favorite parts, especially especially the part where he meets the Iron Giant for the first time and the giant picks him up oh, and, yeah. and, Hogarth, and Hogarth is like, no, 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 he's not food. He's Dean. <laughs> And the giant just looks at him and he's like, D. <laughs> yeah, then, well, I next, like... And then the next frame is him shaking his espresso cup like a million miles an hour. He's like, so, where did you find this? <laughs> yeah, that's it's true. I forgot very, he was in that. Very underrated comedic timing from Harry Connick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's charming in a lot of roles, uh, voiceover or, uh, you know, feature film. He's in... I really like him in Hope Floats. I think he's really good in that. And, uh, you know, of course, he's a very talented musician and he does a lot of soundtracks, like uh, when, when the one Harry Met Sally soundtrack, which is a classic. Uh, he did the whole thing and that's so good. Uh, so if you just want a sweet little animated Christmas movie, then check out The Happy Elf. Why not, right? <laughs> a guy named Harry made the soundtrack for when Harry met sally true that was deep cut there <laughs> i but, love it when a plan comes together yes so what is your final pick my penultimate pick oh penultimate. that's right so my uh so my penultimate choice is another comedy starring dan Aykroyd. i did not plan this but i was I was looking and I just randomly came across this movie, which was one of my favorites, but people crap on it all the time. And I think that, I, I think it's not a bad little movie. It's from 1998, 1988, my apologies. And it is called The Great Outdoors. Uh, this starred John Candy and Dan Aykroyd. And it tells a story of John Candy, who, who is like this big executive from Chicago, he, or wait, he lives in Chicago, but he decides to take his wife and his and his sons up to the same cabin that he went to as a boy, and that 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 was one of the formative vacations of his life. But then, out of nowhere, his very annoying brother-in-law, played by Dan Aykroyd, is like, "Hey, we're crashing the party, and we're joining you." And he is he's like the complete opposite of John Candy in every way. He's a stockbroker. He's seemingly very wealthy. He drives a Mercedes Benz. He has two identical twin daughters who I think are descended from the girls from The Shining, but that can neither be confirmed nor denied. It's funny in the movie, I promise. This was written by John Hughes, and this was around the time when John Hughes 
like I've said a couple times on this podcast, when he was at the very top of his game. Like, he had just gotten off of directing Breakfast Club, Weird Science, Pretty in Pink, was about to write Home Alone about two years after this movie. But unfortunately, when it comes to The Great Outdoors, this movie's not really treated very well. It's got a 24 on Metacritic, which is not very good. But I've watched this movie several times, and I absolutely love it. It's not perfect. It's definitely not top tier. It's definitely not top tier, Hughes, but I think it definitely is like even his kind of lesser stuff is still very entertaining. There's a scene where in, where John Candy's on this uh, on this water ski and and he's like he's like showing his son how to do water skiing, but but Dan Aykroyd in the boat misunderstands that he wants to go see, skiing instead of John Candy's son, and the entire scene is just John Candy being dragged across this lake and. <laughs> And he's getting like, he's getting water splashed on him. He crashes into people. He crashes into like these stick things in the water, which is just looks so painful and crashes through shacks. It's funny in the movie, I promise. And the coup de grace is that it just, he's like, I'm done. I'm leaving. And he just packs up and he almost leaves, but his wife convinces him to stay. I mean, it's, it's John Candy. So of course it's going to be hysterical. And at the end of the day, The Great Outdoors is just one of those movies that got treated harshly and just, I just don't think it's worth it. I found, found myself very entertained by it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I was thinking I hadn't seen this movie, but then I look on Letterboxd and I have it rated and watched, so maybe I have seen it. <laughs> I mean, uh, I go back but, in my letterboxed uh, and sometimes I'm like, wait, I saw that? Like, I was yeah. looking through my 2020 list and I remember seeing The Grudge from earlier this year. I'm like, wait, I saw The Grudge earlier this year? <laughs> like the 2020 version, yeah. not the 2004 version. Right. I'm like, oh, that's right, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I think that critics can sometimes be really tough on comedies that uh, they have to be practically perfect or they have to have some kind of social agenda <laughs> in order for them to get good reviews. Uh, and I, I don't know, I, I don't know why that is. I, Cause I love a good comedy and they're so hard to come by. And uh, so, yeah, I'll have to give this another watch sometime because I don't remember watching it, but evidently I did. <laughs> yeah, John. Can on a bit of a side note, John Candy was taken from us far too soon. I know. He was one of he was one of the funniest people walking this planet. Like, if any of you have never seen his impression of Orson Welles, do it. You will be laughing your head off. It's like, just type mm -hmm. in John Candy, Orson Welles, Billy Crystal show. You will not, Ooh. you will not be sorry. Yeah. I haven't seen that. I'll check it out. I, Very good. I All right. On, I am on my mark. You move your camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, my last pick is uh, from the world of Barbie and it's Barbie, a perfect Christmas. And I'm a bit of a champion for the Barbie movies over on my channel. I've reviewed 20 of them for family movie night. Wait, there's 20 Bar of these things. Oh, there's more than 20. I still have uh, practically double that to review. I still have practically double that to review. <laughs> wow. But, uh, but uh, this this one is a fun one. I tend to not like the modern ones as much as the fairy tale ones for the Barbie movies, but this one does a pretty good job. And it's a simple story. So Barbie is uh, going to visit her aunt M Millicent in New York, and she's driving through, and she has her sisters there, Skipper, Stacy, and Chelsea, and <laughs> they're driving, and they get stuck in. Uh, in Minnesota and they end up having to stay for the holidays at the Tannenbaum Inn and every they they end up making it great for Christmas and they put on this Christmas concert and it's really cute it's fun and has some really fun songs uh, that uh, that they're gonna rack it up stack it up is one of the songs it's very fun and then they have the wish i wish tonight perfect christmas deck the halls and it's gonna be amazing so some fun songs you've got decent animation in this one 
uh, there's a lesson to be learned about getting along and being positive and the holidays. And, and the thing about these Barbie movies is that they could just, just, they could just not even try, right? <laughs> they could sell toys. They could just put them out. People would buy them to entertain their kids, their little, little kids. They do not need to put the effort that they do into the story and into the music of these movies. And so I just admire that about them, that they don't just half bake it when they totally could. And I mean, a lot of these have uh, symphony orchestras that are brought in. They have uh, <laughs> like real effort. They have a, a an all you know well-known people in the cast on some of them this one is is a uh pretty um this one is just your voice cast you have diana karina voicing barbie uh with a different they have different singing voices with their uh, their uh, sp spoken voices and so i don't know i just really admire that they actually try <laughs> and they're obviously made for young girls and they're going to entertain those girls they're fun they have a nice message they have decent songs so uh this i think is good and they also have on peacock they have barbie in a christmas carol which i also really enjoy uh but i'd already done a christmas carol so for this so i went with the perfect christmas so, so I'll put my wait. link down to my Barbie playlist if people want to hear more of my opinions. <laughs> so Barbie plays Scrooge? Yes. Yeah. So she, in, the, in that one, it's Barbie is telling the story of, uh, I forget her name, but she is, but it's a woman who is a uh, opera singer uh, who is the total diva. And what I think is kind of interesting that they do in this version of Christmas Carol is uh, they have the Cratchit character is her assistant. And what happens is, is that she, when they go to future, they end up, she ends up seeing that the Cratchit character ends up becoming like her. And she sees that and she's like, oh, wow, I don't want that to happen. Which I think is kind of an interesting take on the story, right? Because usually you just see Cratchit as like this perfect person and in the future. And in this one, uh, there's, you see that she follows the example of her, you know, her mentor. And I thought that was interesting. And then also, I like the fact that when Marley comes, Marley is her aunt, who was kind of like a stage diva, stage mom uh, for her, this opera singer. And uh, when Marley comes, she has uh, um, brushes and, and mirrors and stuff like that on her on her chains instead of boxes and cash boxes which i thought was kind of clever uh and so they they put a lot more work in these movies than they have any need to and i admire that and i i think they're they're fun so uh, for for their target demographic they're very entertaining and so yeah perfect christmas well, Perfect Christmas is probably one of my favorite of the modern day ones because those tend I tend to like the fairy tale ones better than the modern ones. Uh, but uh, but there we go. Yeah, Barbie Perfect Christmas. I'll put my playlist to all my Barbie reviews if people want to check it out. Yeah, Barbie a Perfect Christmas may be fine and all, but is it cinema like Mank? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that just I'm I'm sorry. I just had to do that. <laughs> That's okay. So what is your final pick? All right. So going from the, uh, from, from Barbie, a perfect Christmas, I'm going to be talking about a movie about uh, the clones of Hitler. <laughs> I'm going to be <laughs> hard left turn. Uh, my, my final choice is a movie called the boys from Brazil. Uh, this was directed by Franklin J. Schaffner, who has, who directed in his career, a severely underrated prison break movie called Papillon, which starred Steve McQueen and Dustin Hoffman. Highly recommend if you all have not seen it. It's a very like soul sucking movie, but if you can get through it, it is just, it's outstanding. He also directed Patton. We all know what that is. He won the Oscar for that. And he also directed a little movie. You might've heard of it. It's called the OG 1968 Planet of the Apes. Oh. Get, get your hat, get your paws off me, you damn dirty ape. 
but <laughs> but the boys but the boys from brazil is exactly like i was joking about it's essentially about a Nazi hunter played by Laurence Olivier who catches wind that the angel of death, Joseph Mengele, played by Gregory Peck, has been living in Paraguay and has cloned Hitler. Well, it turns out there are more, there is more than a clone of Hitler. There are clones, plural. I know this sounds completely ridiculous, but this is honestly a really, really solid movie. Uh, Gregory Peck, we all know him from To Kill a Mockingbird and a lot of other movies. He's almost unrecognizable as Joseph Mengele, which speaks to his acting talent. And it just, it really speaks to his ability to go from kind and lovable in To Kill a Mockingbird to like the devil incarnate in The Boys from Brazil. Uh, Laurence Olivier is yet another actor where we all know his pedigree and his reputation. Uh, won, uh, won an Oscar for, I believe it was one of the Shakespeare adaptations. Uh, he was in Spartacus. He's been around, and he's really good in this as well. James Mason is in there. He's great. Uh, Rosemary Harris, Aunt May from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, she's in there. Denholm Elliott is in there, who is uh, B Marcus Brody from the Indiana Jones movies. He's in there, too. Like I said, this uh, this is definitely... this. This is definitely a bit of a confusing movie to wrap your head around, but if you get past it and you get into it, it's actually really good. I have, I, I watched this movie when I was in a class called Biological Themes in Film, and we had gotten to the DNA portion of the class, and uh, and the movie we watched along with it was this one. So I have, I have memories of this movie, and I've seen it several times since, and it has just gotten gotten better with time it's not like a war movie where it's like people fighting each other it's like a it's more of an acting movie than an action movie but like i said if you can get past the premise and all of that and give it a chance it might surprise you huh. yeah i i've never heard of this movie before you had it on the list uh, is it is it like a comedy or is it a drama no no it's a very serious drama it's based oh, okay. off of a book written by a woman named Ira Levin, or Ira Levin. I, oh, okay. I, I may be getting that name wrong, but it's it's based off of a book, So, and it's played totally huh. straight. Oh, okay, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I never heard of that in my whole life, so that will be a fun one if I, we do a follow-up to check out, because that is new to me. Very interesting. So we gave you quite the variety that you can watch on Peacock. <laughs> I think yeah, we've uh, we've run the gamut. Yeah, we have. So, <laughs> so Ryan, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd of Ryan Cam Twenty. Then there's of course my YouTube channel, which is just called Ryan Cam. Uh, to, we are recording this on a Monday, which means that my video for the AFI project of Intel, or wait, we are recording this on a Monday, which means that my video on the movie Intolerance, Love Struggle Through the Ages has dropped. On Wednesday, I'll be talking about The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, and then on Friday, I'll be talking about West Side Story. And then I'll also be reviewing The Mandalorian Chapter, uh, The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 7 on Saturday. So the AFI project is going full swing and will be going full swing throughout the rest of the year. So if you all haven't checked me out, please do. Put a lot of time and effort into the channel. I'm very proud of it. And if you haven't given me a chance, please go ahead and do. Yes, you should all check it out. It's really good stuff. And uh, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Ron Tomatoes. Check that out. And uh, check out the Hallmarkies podcast where we have all different uh, uh, reviews and interviews of all of your holiday content that you can want over there. It's really fun. So thanks so much. And uh, yeah, let us know what you've been watching on Peacock, what you think of the service. If you found any hidden gems, we would love to talk about that. And if you have any thoughts about all the different films that we've talked about, please leave that in the comments section. And, uh, and please like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Please consider becoming a patron. We have our patron watch along uh, coming up and they're a lot of fun. And uh, we also have our merch store, which has tons of holiday designs. So take a look at that. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you all later. Bye everyone. Bye.